All right. Welcome back to Blue by 90. I'm Justin, joined by Tanner, and we've got a special guest with us today. Michigan Hopes legend. I, do People got to call you a legend, right? Yeah, it's very loosely. I don't know about that. <laughs> we've got Spike Albrecht with us today. Um, you've at least got like 10 to 15 minutes of being a legend for like, that's for certain uh, yeah. on top of the rest of your career. But uh but no, appreciate you joining us, man. Um, it's happy to see you back on Twitter, getting into the Michigan atmosphere a little bit yeah. again with Stauskas and everything too. But uh, but thanks for coming on with us, man. For sure. No, I appreciate you guys, man. I'm I'm excited. Let's get it going. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, it's it's an interesting time to say the least for Michigan basketball. Um, you know, I think the first thing I wanted to ask you was like, what were you thinking when all of a sudden? John Beeline's name was back in the fold of like trying to find a new coach. Yeah. Well, I thought, I thought there was a slight chance that coach Beeline was coming back to be right. the coach for a second. Um, which, you know, I, with his, sorry, coach B, but with his, his age and his, he's had some health <laughs> stuff. So I was like, I don't know if he'll do it. Um, but I thought he would have been, you know, a great answer in a quick fix, but I will say I was super pumped that he was involved. I don't know to what extent, um, but, you know, he's he's someone, obviously, he's a Hall of Famer in, in college basketball and, um, you know, has deep ties to Michigan. So I, I thought Ward reaching out to him or whatever that looked like um, was a great move. And, and they went out and, and got a really good a really good coach and a really good guy in, in, in Dusty. Yeah, I mean, I think the the one thing that I can say from just the fan perspective is probably a little bit different than the, the former player perspective, but, like, after the last two plus seasons, I mean, even when they made the Sweet 16 in 2021, like a top five preseason, just didn't really mesh with the five stars they brought in and some of the guys that were still there from the Beeline era. But over those last few years, like it's just so refreshing to have like some sort of hope and optimism for the program because that had really been missing. So from a former player perspective, like what is your thoughts on that? And like, what are the conversations like over the last couple of years? You don't have to share those if you don't want to, but like moving forward oh, now, yeah. having a, having a head man, having a guy that's got a plan, like, what are those conversations? Like, what's the vibe like compared to the last couple of years where it's just kind of a lot of doom and gloom? Yeah, no, I mean, I can tell you, cause I, I still stay in, you know, contact with a lot of my former teammates and, you know, obviously Stowski a lot. We, we go back and forth, me, him, Novak, we're on text threads watching games and, um, obviously we all love Michigan, man. Like we're rooting, we're rooting for those guys every game. Um, wanted to see Jawan do well, but, um, and I'm sure he would be the, the first guy to admit these last couple of years, obviously it was just not what anyone wanted. Um, you know, there's a lot of external factors and things that, you know, I think played into it, but at the end of the day, it's, it's performance-based business and, and we just weren't getting it done. So, um, I think for me, man, like the hardest thing to see wasn't necessarily like even the results, like you know, losing games or whatever. Um, I seen some pictures on, on Twitter and, and like there was in the stands. I mean, I'm seeing like two, three, 4,000 people at games. And, yeah. you know, I know Michigan it's, it's, it's football and it's not like we're going to be sold out every game, but like, you know, when I was playing, I felt like we always had, you know, good crowds. And was way. rocking back in yeah. the day, man, and, for you guys. It was and just like selfishly, man, like four, for the kids playing and for recruits like coming in, like that's what, that's what you want. And I felt like there was just, you know, we, there wasn't a whole lot of juice these last couple of years and excitement around the program. And I think, you know, a lot of it had to do with football winning national championships. So people were like, eh, you know, at least we got that, you know, yeah. but like, I, I definitely think there needs to be a, you know, a, a shift and a change. And I'm hoping, you know, coach may coming in can, can uh, create some of that excitement and, and bring back that buzz. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I think that's like the, the the vibe of the program, you know, just needs to have a little reset here, right? Yeah. There needs to be some juice behind what's going on. It sounds like Dusty has uh, has some juice behind him for sure. Um, yeah. One question, would you like, is it, would it have to be Coach May or is there a chance you would be calling him Dusty as a player if you're coming in? Oh, no, no, no. As, as a coach, man, I was – I was scared shitless. Everybody was coached. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. No, sir. So, um, which actually, I'm, okay. I'm, yeah. So that's where, like, I've heard some things about Coach B. Coach B, like, in front of the press or, like, in interviews, seems like the nicest man on planet Earth. 
But yeah. I have to imagine there were times when you experienced not so nice Coach B, right? Oh, for sure. I, I, uh, Coach B. I mean, he's he's the best. But uh, you know, he definitely had some some competitiveness to him, and he would he would be quick to hold you accountable. So I will say he always went about it in a very respectful manner. Um, like I think in my four years at Michigan, I think I've heard him cuss like five times, and I'm like the complete opposite. I'm <laughs> you know, I drop f bombs left and right, and it's I I don't mean to. It's just like part of who I am. But uh, he definitely lit me up a couple times, and and uh, he humbled me pretty quickly. So what but, is uh, like? What does that usually sound like? If if Coach B is is chewing you out, what does that sound like? Yeah, um, honestly, so I'll just give you like a perfect example. You know, coming back after my. My freshman year, the summer, we, we obviously had that great run. We went to the national championship. Um, you know, I, I had my, my good game in, in the championship or whatever. So I kind of thought I was like, you know, hot stuff, right? <laughs> and then that summer, we're all back. We're like preseason top three, top five. And, uh, you know, my whole class, I, we had some summer class. I can't remember. But um, we ended up skipping a class. And that was like a big, big no-no. I'm thinking summer class, like we're coming off final yeah. four. Who really cares? And uh, Coach B cared. So he brought he brought us in and, you know, we had to do Camp Sanderson for like two weeks. But he literally, man, he went down the row and like lined up Mitch McGarry, Glenn Robinson, Nick Stouse, Karis Levert. And I was the last one and he had already ripped into them. And then he got to me and like it was just like the most degrading thing ever. And he's like in Spike, he goes, I'll send your ass back to a Division three school so quick. And I was just like, oh. I was like, that one stings, man. Like that was, that was a, a shot to the, to the gut, but uh, it was great. I needed it. You know, I was like, right. I was being a punk, a punk 19 year old, 20 year old kid. So it was good. Yeah. Well, I wanted to ask on the subject, and we're probably going to talk a little bit about that 2012, 2013 team. I mean, one of my favorite, probably my favorite Michigan basketball team ever. Um, whether it's that team or just in your time in Michigan, what's the freakiest thing you've ever seen someone do like athletically on the court? Like for me, it's probably Glenn Robinson's 360 against Minnesota, but I'm not yeah. in practice like you were. So I'd love to know yeah. if there was something in practice or even a game that you're like just just freakishly athletic that you saw from one of your guys. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, Glenn, Glenn was a freak. Like the stuff he could do, you know, dunking a basketball wise was insane. Like the 360s, 360 windmills, crazy. But one of the craziest things – I saw, and it was, it was Glenn again, was freshman year summer. It was actually in the weight room. And I, I still tell this story to this day because I, I think it's insane. And, like, I'm not a big – you know, we weren't, like, big weight room guys, like our, our team. Like, I'm a basketball Really? Because you, know? you yeah. definitely yeah. – Yeah, like well, I know. Exactly. You guys <laughs> – this camera doesn't do it justice. Trust me. Um, but, no, we were we were back squatting, dude. And, and Glenn had – I think he had 315 on. So, I think that's three plates on each side. Like, in – I would, yeah, it was crazy. So he's back squatting and just repping them out. And like, he must not have had, you know, on the sides to, to secure it, to make sure nothing slips off. He didn't have them on one of the sides. Yeah. And as he's going down, dude, the thing starts to shift. So think like 315 pounds. Like if that's me, that thing's gone, right? right. Like it's just flying. <laughs> You're sideways. Yeah. You're horizontal. I'm <laughs> done. My career's over. Like, dude, he was this way and was able to like his core strength, like, readjust center it and go back up and I, again i didn't know anything about weightlifting but i'm sitting there watching it and i look at sanderson and i'm like yo i don't know much i was like but what the hell was that and sanderson <laughs> was like he goes he like didn't want to like you know tell glenn and you know get his ego but he's like hey that was the most impressive thing i've ever seen and i was like okay i was like i thought so too but i was like i don't know anything but it was uh it was wild dude i was like this guy's a free show yeah, he um, – I mean, obviously we saw it on the court of just yeah. like the bunnies that he had were, were insane. Um, I mean, I'll say – I'll ask, ask you this. Like when you guys had that core of like, the, you know, they kind of called it the new Fab Five right at the time or whatever, but you had a bunch of freshmen that were coming in. Um, like at what point did you guys know as a class like, oh, shit, like we might have it. Like we kind of – we're, we're kind of that <laughs> squad. Yeah, I think you could kind of see it in the summer, uh, just in like workouts, open gym. I mean, I knew the other four guys in my class were nasty, yeah. like just through doing skill work. I remember going home and telling friends, I'm like, hey, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be the only guy in this class not playing in the NBA. Um, <laughs> but then we would do open gyms. And as freshmen, like I was just happy to get into the open gym, whereas 
these other guys, I mean, they were out there, you know, cooking, getting buckets. And then you have Timmy and Trey in the mix. Um, we had some really good players, but like from yeah. our, our class, like we would split up and do freshmen versus the upperclassmen. And there was days we, you know, we took it to them or wow. like we would compete with them. So that's when I, and then obviously Trey Burke was the X factor because me and him were just not on the same playing <laughs> field, but like everywhere else, I was like, yo, we might have these guys, you know, we're pretty good. So, <laughs> Well, and what, like, what did practice, like when, what did scrimmages look like at the time? Were there times where you're sitting there and you're like, holy shit, there are like seven NBA guys on the floor yeah. right now. Yeah, it was awesome. And I, I mean, I was, it sounds bad, I'm like fangirling at practice, you know, <laughs> but I was, like I wasn't supposed to be at Michigan. So there was times like I'm just a basketball junkie and I right. just, I knew I could compete with those guys, but I also knew I had a ceiling. So like, I appreciate good basketball and in good talented, like, you know, hoopers when I see it. And yeah, I just remember watching those guys and like me and Stalski would go back into the dorm room. We were rooming together freshman year and uh, like, we were just sit there and I was like, I th- you know, I think we're, we might win a national championship. And <laughs> we didn't know anything about college basketball. You know, right. had played a game, but we're like, Dude, Trey's sick, Timmy's sick, like Nick's sick, Mitch is nasty. I was like, we're going to be pretty good. Yeah. So it was fun. I would love to know, um, and I'm sure in that locker room you guys had no doubts, but like that 2012-2013 season, guys start off, what, I think 16-0, and 0, like yeah. get up to number one at, at a certain point. And then there were some late season kind of losses at the back end of the regular season before going into the Big Ten tournament. Um, was there anything that kind of like – was there any sort of like – players meeting like you weren't playing bad or anything but it just was kind of a it wasn't a great end to the year you get a four seed when you've been in the top five all season like yeah. was there any sort of like moment where it's like now nah, we need to lock back in or like was there anything like that that propelled you on that run yeah there there was for sure so I honestly man like I think once we kind of seen you know we had a little skid and, and we felt like and you know, we moved out of the top you know because we were number one in the country at one point but we moved out of the top five or top ten whatever it was and when we ended up losing the Big Ten, um, it was like super deflating, but everything kind of just shifted towards the NCAA tournament. Like we were like, okay, we know we're the best team in the country. We've been talking about, you know, national champs since June. Let's just get to the tournament. So everybody was kind of like just over the regular season, over the Big Ten tournament. Um, and we got bounced early in the Big Ten tournament. But like the NCAA tournament kind of rejuvenated us. And was like, all right, let's get our swagger back. Like, let's go win six straight. So we actually had a a players only meeting at the pizza house. I remember um, right before NCAA tournament kicked off. And it was basically like, all right, like, hey, no social media for the next, you know, three to four weeks or or whatever, you know, the tournament is Um, because that can be distracting. We had some guys, Stowski being one of them, love him to death, but he he would get in his feelings on social media. So we're (laughs) like, let's let's cut off social media. Um. And honestly, like Trey Burke stepped up big time in that in that meeting and went around the horn and just like started, you know, talking about accountability and naming off everyone's strengths and like what they could bring to the table. Um, and that was big because Trey like wasn't really someone who spoke up a lot, um, especially in meetings like that. Like he was obviously a leader on the court and, and a leader by example. But at that point in time, I was like, all right, like fresh start. Everybody's zero and zero. Like we've already proved that we have the talent to be one of the best teams in the country. Now let's just go out and do it. And then honestly, we kind of had a chip on our shoulder because like we went in as a four seed. Right. We got seven NBA NBA players on this team. And like we we probably deserved it because we lost games. But at the same time, we were like, we could beat anybody. Yeah. And and like explain what a what a tournament run like that is like. Because uh, I think, you know, March Madness for us, it's the best time of the year, right? Even as like, you know, we're huge football fans too, obviously, yeah. but like still. The, the first weekend of March Madness is the best weekend of the year by far. Exactly. And, you yeah. know, it's just so fun to, to be in those arenas and, you know, and be a part of that. And so for you guys, when it's like when you're going on a <laughs> run like that and it's it, it's got to feel, you know, you play, you know, Thursday, Saturday or Friday, Sunday. And then if you win those, which it's insane even to get out of that first weekend. Yeah. Right. You go home for what, like 24 hours until you fly back out to wherever you're going. So explain like what it's got to just be like your head spinning at all times. How do you even stay focused? It was, it was, it was honestly, it was crazy. I mean, it was definitely like the most exciting and fun, you know, three or four weeks of my life, but it was a whirlwind. I mean, I remember 
we go to class Monday, Tuesday, right? Like we'd hit, we'd hit classes and obviously. I like, mean, you're not, you're not paying attention to shit. At no, class. no one, no one is. And like everybody, <laughs> everybody's super excited. And they're like pumped for you. The professors and the, you know, right. the classmates, like everybody knows you're getting ready. Cause everybody follows March Madness and, yeah. um, you know, they get behind you during these runs. So like we would go to class Monday, Tuesday, um, and then finish up practice film and then bounce, like head to the airport, either Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, <clears throat> and then we're gone Wednesday through Sunday. So like, you're there a full day in advance, prepping, maybe getting some some time on the court the day in advance. Um, you know, you're scouting, watching film, practicing at like a different gym, but you're getting police escorts everywhere you go. Right. Like you're honestly, you feel like a rock star. Like you're traveling around first class, um, and then you know you play Thursday, play Saturday, or play Friday, play Sunday. But like it's just nonstop, and I'm sure every coach has a, a different approach. But like Coach B, it was if we played Thursday, like we're we're working friday like we're watching film we're scouting we're doing walkthroughs like we were coach beeline is one of the best in terms of preparation like we were always i i always thought like way more prepared than our opponents yeah. and I, I think that's why he always you know he has a lot of success in the tournament michigan right. when coach beeline his system is very hard to prepare for right like on a short day on a two-day notice but what's the reason for that I think that that two guard offense is a is a mother man. Like there's there's a lot to it, you know. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of different reads and counters, and people try to scout it. And I mean, there's just a million different options. Um, and and he, I mean, the pick and roll under Coach yeah. B is quite literally impossible to defend. Elite, yes, yeah, especially with the types of guys he he yeah. recruits right into his system. And he that's we talked about that earlier, like building a team and having an identity. Like he was the best at that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was all business. Like, you know, I had all my friends and family, like they came on all the trips and I, I honestly, I barely got to see them. It wasn't like I was going out, kicking it, you know, grabbing lunch and dinner. Like we were there, you know, to, to get stuff done. And we did have a little bit of downtime here and there, but most of our time was either doing team meals together, watching film, doing walkthroughs. Um, and at the time, you know, you're 19, 20 year old kid. You're like, man, I kind of want to just like chill and live yeah, it up a little bit sure. but the reward was was so worth it yeah i mean it's it's uh it is it's fun to watch so i can't imagine how cool it is and, and fun it is to be a part of it but uh i'm sure you know the thing is that the the normal average joe has no idea how much work actually goes into it you know they yeah. see the 40 minutes on the court and that's about it so yeah for sure it's i wish that was it <laughs> so I wanted to ask about the 2013 Sweet 16 game against Kansas. Uh, would yeah. love to know because I know I'm just taking this is like my again this is like my favorite team. Like I was a senior in high school. Like Michigan had had some success when I was younger, but like I always got mm -hmm. a lot of trash talk my way. So like it was so yeah. so nice. Which by the way, growing up in Indiana, I really wish you guys could have at least split those with the Hoosiers. Uh, Trust me, I. I I'm with I you. I know man. I'm preaching to the choir. Uh, yeah. Did you grow up an Indiana fan, or did you have a? I don't not, know. not really, man. I, uh, he's just saying that now because he's a boy. No, player. no, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'll tell you what. I, I kind of more so rooted for players. Um, like I had some some kids from my area that I kind of grew up watching and like idolized, and you know they had gone to this school or that school. Um, but I, I, I honestly grew up kind of, and this is, I'm sorry to the Michigan fans, but. Um, I kind of grew up being a Notre Dame basketball fan because oh, okay. they they had a guy named Kyle McLenarney. Um, I don't know if that if that name rings a bell, but like yep. just a little white dude, he had games. So I'm like, hey, I could I could be that guy, you know? <laughs> That's kind of how I tried to figure out what teams and in schools I liked. Uh, but they never recruited me, um, and it's just crazy that that I ended up at Michigan, and um, it turns out to be one of our biggest rivals. So. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the Notre Dame basketball, though, like, I don't even know the last time they played. So I think that's okay. I think you're off the yeah, I, th yeah. I thought you were going to say Ohio State because, like, Greg no. or something. Like, no, 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 no. Yeah. It, it worked out great. So now, when you were growing up, at what point? I mean, obviously, A, did you ever, were you always short? Did you ever have a growth spurt? Like, what was the situation? Yeah. And then, B, at what point were you, though, like, I don't fucking care if I'm sure I can still hoop with any dude on the court. Yeah. I mean, so I have two older brothers, so we're, we're all three years apart. So I, I always grew up playing against older guys and, you know, for, for basketball, I, I tell 
I'm not short, short, like in, in general, right? Like I'm <laughs> short. On, I'm sorry. I'm short. I shouldn't have used the athlete. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm short on the basketball court. Right. Um, but yeah, like I've, I've usually always been, you know, as a point guard and especially when you start playing with, you know, high level players, like I've always been one of the smaller guys on the court. So I've always kind of been slighted and, and kind of looked over. Um, but I mean, I, w- I was always competing. Like I've been on a million different basketball floors, AAU, all sorts of showcases. And I'll tell you, like, until I got to Michigan and, and started going against Trey Burke, that was like the first time where I was like, Ooh, this guy's a lot better than me. You know? <laughs> and, and, and like, that was great. Cause it's it like took the it, national player of the year to yeah. be like, Oh shit. I, I, but he's it, I, I come to find out, I'm like, Hey, he's a lot better than everybody else too. So right. it's, it's all good. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I think in high school, I really started to realize, even though I wasn't getting like the notoriety and, and getting recruited, um, I really started realizing I was like, I could definitely play college basketball. I was like, I think I could play division one. Like, cause there's a bunch of kids that I'm playing against that had division one offers. And I was like, I'm kind of giving them buckets. So I'm like, I don't know. I know I don't necessarily pass the eye test, but I was like, it's really not that hard. I was like, I feel like I'm, I'm better than this guy. I don't know why he has offers here or there. Uh, but it just took a special coach to, to kind of see the value in what I bring and, and how I could help impact the game and, and coach B you know, fortunately for me, he, he saw something there. I uh, yeah. I I think the uh, the long baggy shorts at the time too didn't do you oh. the best. It made you look a little shorter. Just uh, fat and short. Yeah, it's like oh. <laughs> terrible, Which you by the way, I, I just looked at uh, you know on Sports Reference, you're five eleven. I feel like we could have yeah. gotten that to six foot in oh, on MGO Blue for sure. Yeah, I mean, in high school, I was always putting six foot. Then I got <laughs> when I got when I got to college, I got scholarship. I was like, "Hey, I'm already here. Like, screw it. Put me whatever you want." What does your driver's yeah. license say? Yeah, it does say six foot though. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Because hey, if I'm going to, now. if I'm going into bars and getting carded, I gotta make sure the girls know I'm six yeah, foot. Yeah, yeah. That you absolutely you know? need to let the girls yeah. know that yeah. you're six foot. Sure. That's hilarious. Well, so, Spike, you mentioned Trey Burke, and I do this, man. I get sidetracked. I start make I start asking a question. And then I think it's about something else, man. This is this is what I do. Justin knows. Yeah, yeah. Um, that Kansas game, man. Like as a fan, I'm um, I'm an emotional watcher. Whether it's football, yeah. basketball, hockey. Like I think That's I right. startled my wife watching the Michigan hockey game yeah. and on my iPad in bed the other night, just like mm-hmm. fist pumping after every goal. Um, so like as a player, what's your what's your mentality when you're down 16 to a number one seed, and you know you've got Trey Burke out there, you got Tim Hardaway, all these guys, Mitch and Gary. Like, what's that mentality like? And then What's that euphoria like when that shot goes through and then you clinch it in overtime? Yeah. So for me, man, because that was a game, I was kind of in like your shoes. I felt like a fan, especially in that last four to six minutes. And I'm super emotional, but I knew I wasn't getting back in that game, right? <laughs> like we're down 12 or 15. There's only three or four minutes left. Like Trey's but, not, there's 0% chance. He could like yeah. break his ankle and he's yeah. still probably like, hey, you got to figure it out, dude. He's still better um, yeah. Yeah. So I'm, <laughs> I was sitting there, honestly, man, and I was just like, I was sad because I was like, dang, like our season's over. I mean, I'm not delusional. I'm like, right. hey, we're down 12, 13, two minutes ago. I was like, damn, this sucks. Like, I thought this team was, you know, we had a legit chance to get to a Final Four. Um, and that's what was going through my mind. Now, obviously, like, we're all putting on the front. We're ch- uh, clear, you know, yeah, clapping and we're cool. like, we got this. But in the, like, in the back of my mind, I'm not playing. So, like, obviously, I can't control it. And I'm like, hey, we got no shot here, you know. Um, but it was cool. I mean, it starts snowballing. Like we got a couple baskets. It goes to 10 to eight to six. And like, it's like, if you're watching the game, right, you're a fan. I'm like, Hey, hold on. Like we might, we might have a shot here, man. Like we got a little life. And that's kind of what I was, was living. And then dude, when he hit that shot, like it was just the coolest moment ever. Cause we had some heartbreaking losses that year. Yeah. Like Trey had a three go in and out at Ohio state. Right. Yeah. I mean, the way that we lost the big 10 with JMO's tip. Yeah. So it was just like, Man, that was that was our moment. Like you gotta have, you gotta have some sort of of luck or something break your way. I feel like every team has it. Maybe not UConn this year. They're beating everyone by hundred. <laughs> but like most teams, right? I mean, Jordan Poole when he hit that three and they got to the Final Four, I think in eighteen, that was like our moment. And for it to be Trey for the year he had, National Player of the Year, like I was just like, oh my god, someone's someone's looking what? over this kid. Well, okay, but when he was – okay, when he spots up to, like, take that shot from 35 feet or whatever it was, yeah. is there ever, like – I know it happened so quick, so I don't even yeah. know if there's a chance to think about it. But, like, it, was there ever, like, 
what are you doing? Like that moment. I, I think everyone kind of had that. But like for me, I, I know there's like a great clip out there of Stauskas and he's like, wow, that's a bad shot, you know? <laughs> but like, which it, I mean, obviously it wasn't, but it's like, dude, you're down three with seven seconds to go. You're getting a double drag screen. Like you're not going to get a wide open look. For me, I was just like, hey, if we're going to go down, like I want to go down with our best player. I was like, Trey, I don't care where the hell you shoot it from. I was like, I feel better about you shooting it than anybody else. Yep. So like, and I, that's how I would be as a coach. Like I want to put the ball in my best player's hands. And like, I mean, dude, like big time players make big time plays. And that, that was it. I was like, this dude's nasty. Yeah. I have a question. Is, is Josh Bartlestein like a, is he like a time traveler or something? Like why did he react so quickly? Like he reacted for the balls in the air and he's like fist pumping. What? Well, like yeah. I, that picture cracks me up every single time. I know. Yeah. I, dude, I know. I, I see him on the bench. Like he gets up and does like the little leg kick. And I'm like, Dude, if whether or not you meant to do that, I was like, it it looks super baller because you look like you just had like the most swag and you knew that was going in. When I'm like, he's shooting a 30 foot step back, like we have no idea what's gonna happen. Maybe he maybe he knew more than us at the time because now he definitely knows more ball than yeah, us because he's for, like an NBA GM at this for point. For sure. Yeah, he's the yeah. CEO of the Phoenix Suns. Yeah, yeah he's, so, he's he's crushing it. He's a sure. ball knower. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, and then obviously that leads to, uh, leads to the game of your life. Mm -hmm. Um, and a few games later, I mean, uh, did you ever in a million years think that like, all right, you're, you're warming up in the national championship. First of all, take that part in of like, holy shit, I'm in the national championship. Right. Yeah. Was that that even like, that had to be the most insane thing in the biggest (laughs) arena ever. Right. Yeah. It was unbelievable, man. Like, and that's something like, it's hard to put into words that experience, but like running, running through the tunnel and the smokes flying out. And I mean, you're running into an arena in a court where there's 75, 80,000 people there. Um, I I tell people it's like, I was running around and we're doing our little lap. You can like, you feel like you're hovering above the court. Like I couldn't even like feel myself on the floor. Um, so, I mean, it was just like, it was like euphoric, man. It was it was an awesome, an awesome moment. And uh, and then obviously you like, so you go into the game after Trey. Did he get two fouls? Is that why he got pulled? Right? Um, I think he yeah, got too early. I think I went in with him when he had one. Okay. So because I, I was playing alongside him for a little bit. Okay. And then when he got his second, I knew I was in the rest of the half. Like full time and and he was coming out now i still say if stuff started hitting the fan with me in there like coach b i'm sure would have brought trey back in like you have to at that point like yeah you're not saving him for uh you know the masters it's like let's get him back out here right so that makes sense um yeah but then i mean obviously like you just catch fire uh and was there like was it was it just one of those like unconscious moments where you're just like I I don't know what's going on or like it was was there direction from Coach B like hey I want you to take a couple of these shots or how did it go down? No, I think there was no, yeah. <laughs> I mean Coach B's I think his direction was just like hey man like like dude be confident like we we trust in you we believe in you like go do your thing. Um, but yeah, I mean I like I've been in a group before and kind of like caught fire. I feel like everybody in in sports has kind of had that, that mode. And I just happened to catch it on, on the biggest stage. Um, but it's something really weird. Like my shot, I felt so good that whole tournament. I don't know what it was, if it was the basketballs or, or what, but I was just like, I felt like every shot I took was going in. Um, and even in like the previous games and, um, I obviously, I just didn't shoot a ton of them, but I got a lot more opportunities in that game. Cause I played a long, you know, longer minutes. Um, but yeah, like never in my wildest dreams that I think I was going to go out and play 20 minutes in the national championship and, and score 17 points. And, you know, a lot of that had to do with them probably not guarding me all that well, cause they didn't know who I was. Um, so I know I, I snuck a couple quick ones in there while they probably didn't have me on the scouting report, but, uh, it was pretty cool. And I think more than anything, man, like I, I like to, to look back or hear from people where like, it was so cool to see how excited my teammates were for me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then like my friends and family, because obviously it was a great experience for me to be out there and, and, you know, playing well on a big stage. But like it was looking back, it was cooler to see like the guys on the bench going nuts because it was just the most unexpected thing in college basketball that year. 
Loved it. I think the only thing more unexpected, and this is a two-parter, Spike, because I think this kind of segues into, you know, what college basketball is today versus, you know, a decade yeah. ago. So, one, how quickly after the social media hiatus did you reinstall Twitter <laughs> to tweet yeah. at Kate Upton? Yeah. And secondly, do you ever sit back and think, damn, I could have made so much fucking money if <laughs> I was 10 years younger? Yeah, I – uh no, for sure. And I don't know how much money I would have made. I would have taken anything. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, the social media was activated pretty quickly. I, I, I remember sitting in, in the locker room and this is after a loss, mind you. Right. Um, but like we're in the locker room and I'm kind of just looking around. And, and I remember like guys on the team just like looking at me as if they'd like seen a ghost. Like <laughs> what what just happened? And I mean, this is like Twitter and, you know, social media. It was kind of new back then. Like it wasn't what it is today. Um, but I just remember people coming up and telling me that, you know, like you, you're trending or, you know, I think, I think my followers went from like 3000 to like 40,000 overnight, which oh that, that's a big deal, especially back then. Right. Like, yeah, for sure. Um, and I, yeah, I mean, I obviously did the whole Kate Upton thing the next, the next day, uh, you know, with, with coach B kind of co-signing that. Cause I remember doing it. And I was like, I don't think he's going to be super happy about this, but it was like, so hey, what did you, did you like shoot a text to him like, hey, I'm about to at Kate Upton. Are you okay with this? No, it was it was kind of like him co-signing it after the fact, because <laughs> uh, like I, I had talked to Stauskas and, and Novak and some of my my friends and brothers and just like ran it by a bunch of people that I felt like would help me make a good decision. <laughs> and now people back to you, yeah, yeah. And they're like, no, no, no. They're like, dude, that's amazing. Like she was at the game. They're like, you know it's way more likely that, that uh, she responds to you than, than you just doing what you did. So right. <laughs> I was like, okay, that's, that's fair. And, and coach B was super cool about it. And he kind of leaned into it and, and we had a lot of fun going, going back to Ann Arbor and, and stuff. That's funny. Uh, did anything ever come of it? What did no, was no. There ever like not even a conversation? <laughs> no. Yeah. She married, anything? she married Justin Verlanders. Yeah. I know yeah. that part. Yeah. But, yeah. Like, yeah. There no. was never like no DM at nothing. Nothing, nothing. No, no, no. <laughs> no. That's yeah. So that's, that's a bummer. That's yeah, a bummer. it's all good. No, it worked, know, out, hey, worked out well for her. So that was, it did work out well for her. <laughs> hey, you're doing all right. Um, yeah. You know, <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I mean, hey, shoot your shot, right? You shot your shot in the game. Shoot your shot. Yeah. at You know, why not? For uh, sure. So, yeah, you know, that is that is funny. Obviously, I mean, the game, obviously, we wish went a different way. Yeah. Uh, you know, Luke Hancock just goes – he goes unconscious in the second half. Can't believe you said his name. That I know. Yeah. It triggers me still to this day. Hey, he's uh, a great dude, by the way. So. Is he, I, yeah, dude, I'm he – uh, so my previous company, like – so I work in finance, and, like, he's yeah, doing yeah. his thing in Louisville uh, still. So I told my I told my buddy that covers Kentucky, I was like, hey, have you ever talked to him? Like, just let him know I'm, I'm furious still. Yeah. <laughs> because I was like – in the first half, I'm like, holy shit. Michigan's going to win the national championship. And then that son of a gun hits like four threes. And I'm just yeah. like, all right, cool. There's like nothing you yeah. can do. Like it was kind of the same thing as far as like just what you did spike and just putting up yeah. shots. And then I'm like, who the hell is this guy? Just, you know, hitting threes. Like it was just such a back and forth and it was a great right. game. And I don't want to skip ahead too much, but since we're on the subject, I know it was a different regime when you were at Louisville, but did you ever just walk around like, Hey man, that that block was clean. Like, was there ever any of that in your head of like, man? Uh, not not really. Just because a lot of those guys weren't there, right? You know? So it was a completely different different staff, and you know, they weren't really a part of it. But like, I I do mess around with you know with Luke. I've seen him from time to time at, at Final Fours and whatnot. We hang out, and I'll I'm sure if I have a couple beers or something, I'll give him a hard time. But uh, he he's been a great sport about. It. He's he's a good dude and. You know, I always tell people, like, if it had to be one guy in that team to to do what he did and, and beat us, like, you know, I'm glad it was him because he's he's a you know he's a, a good stand up dude. Um, for sure. But I mean, obviously, you're part of one of the greatest Michigan yeah. basketball teams ever, which has to be so cool. And just you know, the run that you guys went on in your in your tenure. Um, yeah. And then you go to Purdue, which I want to talk about them a little bit for a second, just because yeah. they're you know they're about to be in the Final Four. Um, you have shown so much love for coach painter, uh, yeah. you know, in your past. And so like, I mean, talk about him, you know, obviously it's not like we love coach painter. I think we yeah. respect coach painter yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. fans, you know, we wish we could beat the shit out of him though still, for but, sure. uh, but I mean, just like, how has he, 
you know, even through what they've gone through with, with tournament struggles, yeah. built up an incredible program there. And now, you know, going into a Final Four with possibly the best team in the tournament, you know, up there with UConn and Zach Eady just being just a non-human being. He's an alien for sure. Yeah, but, uh, he is. He's, yeah. he's an absolute freak, man. No, I, <laughs> I, I agree, man. And, like, people give me a hard time because, you know, obviously, like, Michigan, I, I did a year at Purdue, and I, I do show paint and Purdue some love, but like it's just different. Like, I got a pretty unique perspective having been around him. And, you know, it's like I, I give love to people that are, are good people, they're genuine, they, they treat people well, they do things the right way. Like, he's very, he's, he's very different personality wise than like Coach Beeline, but the way he approaches the day to day and like the way he's built that program and the way he takes care of people and treats former players and this and that, it's very similar. Right. Like, I promise you, if if like he was at the University of Michigan, people would love him. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. Because he's a great dude. He does things the right way. Genuinely cares about the players. Um, but I think, you know, just in terms of the program and, and what he's built, like it hasn't happened overnight. Right. You know, like, I mean, he's been there. I think I heard him say 19 years and, and he's had some struggles, but like he's continued to get up off the ground and work and work and where he recruits. He's done a great job of, you know, building the relationship. Well, he recruits aliens every single yeah. year too, right? Well, actually, I think they have I don't another know if they're one. Aliens or yeah, are they, they like do. created in a lab somewhere? Yeah, I'm not, I'm, still, I'm not sure about Edie because I haven't seen anything like him before. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, he does he does a great job with with recruiting. But like, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier. He does a good job of putting together teams, and there's a clip out there of him talking about, you know, the Purdue identity and like him building rosters and he's not just out there looking for four and five stars. Like one of my best friends is Grady Eifert. I don't know if anybody remembers that name, but yeah, like yeah. Grady was a former walk-on. He's, you know, a six, six, four man. He just, he's a tough dude, but he can make open shots. He doesn't turn the ball over. So like paint is very, um, you know, detailed about how he's putting together the pieces are, you know, around Zach and that support system or, you know, around, you know, former players, X, Y, and Z, whoever it is. But like, it's a lot of due diligence. It's a lot of work. And then he is very similar to Beeline in the fact that every day, the way that he prepares, you know, they over prepare in terms of, of strategy, game plan, X's and O's. Um, so like, I promise you of all the teams left in, in the final four, they, they may not win it, but I've, I've been there as a player. I spent there, I spent a year as a, a GA. They're going to be the most prepared team in, in the final four in terms of strategy, X's and O's. I mean, their system, all the different plays and counters, it's it's incredible. So he's he's done a really good job, man. Yeah. Um, I have one question though. Is Zach Eady just tall? Oh God. So <laughs> dude, that is like fighting words to me. I it it drives me nuts, man. And like people people hate on him. Yeah, he's tall. Like, of course he's tall. He's tall as hell. Sure, it helps, right? But like it's not his fault that he's right. he's tall. But like it's also people don't understand how difficult it is to be seven, four, 300 pounds and, and move the way that he does. Like there's been yeah. a lot of seven footers. I know a lot of seven footers who suck, who are right. awful. Right. I played with them. Like I've played against them. Not everybody who's seven foot Zach Eady. Like he's the most dominant player in the last 20, 30, 40. I have no idea. Like he's a stud right for college. I don't know how he'll be in the NBA, but like college he's, he's insane. I mean, but like his motor, his stamina, the way he can get up and down, I mean, he's playing 32 minutes a game this year. Like, that's incredible. Finishes with both I mean, hands. Like 32 minutes a game for a dude that I th he's 300 some pounds. It's absurd. Yeah. Like, it, it is, it's, it's, it's crazy. wild. I, you know? I also like, I don't, how does he even like get on a plane, get in a car, get, you know, duck? Yeah. Like, I don't know how he lives a normal I know. You see that video of him like walking into a room and he's like ducking because yeah. like, he's yeah. seven foot four? I, Jesus. Dude, I had to take him to the airport a couple times when I was GA there and I was like, dude, I don't know what to do. I was like, I got, I got a Toyota RAV4. I was like, you just. <laughs> Figure it out, dude. Like, like the back seats down. all three yeah. rows of, of seats down for yeah. you, I guess. That's like, what we need. He's, he's a good kid, though, man. Like, in the other thing I tell people all the time, like most bigs that I I know and I played around that are I that I played with, they typically play basketball just by like association. Like somebody right. sees them walking around at school and they're like, Hey, you're tall, you should play basketball. Yeah. Right. Like Zach genuinely loves it and he works at it. Like most bigs don't work. They're kind of soft. They're kind of just naturally good at it because they're taller. 
Right. Dude, Zach busts his ass. Like he he is in the gym every day. He has his routine of jump hooks, and I mean, I, I probably go out and just do do fifty jump hooks from from three or four feet. So I, I promise you ain't gonna make a whole lot of them, right? Like <laughs> it's not it's not an easy shot. It helps being seven four, but like he's really worked at it. So it's not just like it happened overnight. That's why I got a lot of respect for him. Yeah, for sure. I do think it's kind of comical. Like I saw it hit, he was doing like a warm up session the other day yeah. before one of the games and doing like, you know, 10 jump hooks in a row. It is just hilarious to see. Oh. Because it literally looks like a little type hoop. It's like that. It's like uh, those videos you see of like the Papa shot where it's just like, yeah. boom, boom, boom. Yeah. He's, it's like a robot, dude. He's, he is. He's automatic with it. It's insane. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that like, you know, I see what Purdue does with Edie, and yeah. even though they're getting the ball to him in the paint a lot, still you watch every all four other guys. They're moving. They're yeah. making sure they're in the right spot. You know, again, we're not, we're not going to talk shit about what has happened recently in Michigan, but the mm -hmm. one thing that I noticed about them was you, they get the ball in the paint and everyone's standing around. And yeah. I think that just seems to be the difference between what Michigan like was lacking in the past, you know, year or two was like it didn't seem like they, you know, there everyone was on the same same uh, same plan or whatever it is, or you know, working off the ball. And yeah. you know, I think you as a point guard too probably have a different <laughs> appreciation of like working off the ball, you know, as yeah. especially as somebody that played alongside as the two guards sometimes to Trey Burke. Where you're sure. definitely not the focal point of that <laughs> offense, yeah. I would imagine, right? So for sure. So that's stuff like, yeah, I mean, you gotta be drilling that like all day, every day in practice, right? Like there's typically like breakdown sessions where you're working on different actions and you know, post splits and this or that. And dude, I don't know. I wasn't at practices, like don't know what went wrong. Like yeah, I'm sure right. Juwan was doing some stuff, you know, some of it was probably on Juwan, some of it's probably on the players, like they gotta buy in and you know, be held accountable and do their things. But yeah, just Whatever was going on, you know, it just wasn't – it wasn't uh, adding up and, and coming to fruition over the last couple of years, unfortunately. Yeah, for sure. Um, go ahead, Tanner. Oh, I was going to – we kind of passed this, but I wanted to ask it. Um, Justin also talks a lot, so it's great. It's, great, it's a great <laughs> podcast. Do, uh, yeah, it works. Uh, and I'm supposed to hear balls. Uh, Spike, I'm sure when you're going through kind of the – the transfer process and, and yours was a great transfer. So a little bit more similar to what the transfer portal is today, kind of having the ability to choose and not have to sit out. But when you're going through that process, I know I'm sure your number one criteria is somewhere you're comfortable, somewhere you feel like you're going to play and win. Mm -hmm. Was there any like weird conflicting feelings for you going to another big 10 school? Or was that something that didn't really cross your mind? Yeah, there, there was for sure. Like there was definitely a couple big 10 schools that just weren't, you know, I, I wouldn't do that weren't of interest. Um, but with me being from Indiana and like Purdue didn't at the time, like the other Indiana school. So, so IU was one that I probably wouldn't have gone to. Um, but Purdue didn't really feel like much of a rival. I knew coach B and, and paint liked each other. They had respect for each other. Like Purdue's a good program. There was like, no, there was no bad blood there. Um, and for me, like the biggest thing and in, in what I value is, is being close to home, being around my family my parents, my brother's sister, like they love coming to games. So a couple of the other schools I was looking at at the time were like Syracuse, Wichita State, some West Coast schools, like kind of a hodgepodge, like all over the place. But for me, I just felt most comfortable with with Purdue and Payne. And honestly, the players, like I felt like they welcomed me and, and we're just really good dudes. Because um, as, as a fifth year, I knew I was only going to be there one year. I was like, I don't want to go deal with a bunch of assholes. Yeah. Like I'm 23 years old. I was like, I'm not trying to deal with this. So. You know, I was like, I want to play, I want to win, but I want to be around good people. And, and that's that's how Purdue was um, where I ended up. I mean, yeah, I mean, I do think that, like, I I don't know best the ins and outs of, like, the program specifically, yeah. but I do think Beeline or Michigan under Beeline and Purdue under Coach Painter, probably yeah. similar styles, similar types. You know, they're they're not the same people, but, like, you know, both just classy guys and, and building it up with, you know, yeah, the integrity thing. So, yeah, I'm sure Absolutely. it was an easy transition there. Yeah. Um, so I want to talk a little bit more about Dusty, about Coach May, yeah. um, what your thoughts are. Uh, you know, one thing I think that you mentioned before we started recording was <laughs> that he's already reached out to you, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, which is awesome. And, uh, yeah. you know, I, I'll be the first to admit, like, 
I haven't watched every Florida Atlanta game, so I don't know, <laughs> you know, his, his philosophy and, I, you know, philosophy. I'll just say like, I really liked watching them, especially when their games were nationally televised. Like I was like, one thing I like about Dusty's teams, like these guys, they're fiery. They play hard. They're going to compete. So I think we need some of that, that edge, but yeah, the, the biggest thing, and I, I told you guys before we went on was like, you know, coach may had his press conference a week, a week and a half ago, whenever it was. And Two days later, I mean, he's got a million things going on in Ann Arbor, right? Moving his family, doing this or that. He reached out to me, hit me up at like 8 a.m. Just to call, introduce himself, say what's up. Um, he has some ties to, to my hometown in Crown Point. But just wanted to introduce himself, make sure like everybody feels welcome and a part of the program and, and wants to get people back. Um, and that, to me, goes, goes a long way. Um, and I know a lot of the other former players think that as well. And and that's something like I, I told him, I was like, man, like, dude, I appreciate you doing this. This is super classy. Like would love to, uh, to help you like get folks back. Cause that's what it's all about. Like everybody preaches brotherhood and family and this and that. Um, and I think Purdue is amazing at it. Like not to plug Purdue, but like I've told Michigan, I was like, Hey, we need to do this. Like I've been on both sides of it. We don't do as good of a job as yeah. Purdue. Like they take care of their own. They're bringing people back all the time. Like you just feel super, super welcome. And so the fact that, that coach may did that. I was like, man, this, this dude gets it. Cause it's, it's about more than just, you know, recruiting players and, and winning yeah. games. Like you're the CEO of a program. You're the head coach. Like there's a lot more that's into that. And I, I was just, I thought that was really cool of him to do that. And I know he's making his rounds to a lot of other former players too. Well, I was going to say, I think I saw you, Stauskas, Novak, more guys, like all mm -hmm. tweet. He must have called all of you on the same day. Yeah. I think you all tweeted supportive, yeah. him, which is cool. But For I mean, sure. yeah, I think it's like, you know, I, I, a lot of people are probably, you know, from the outside perspective, like, yeah, bring Coach B's uh, culture back and things like that. Yeah. I mean, Juwan had good culture at a time, yeah. right? Like, you know, you know, it's, I don't think you need to just throw the whole thing out, but yeah. I think to your point, it's like, you know, you guys are a huge piece and pillars of this program and you want to have all these guys in that brotherhood and supporting what's going on for the yeah. next you know, generation of these guys. Right. I agree. And I, I told him, I was like, dude, Michigan's a special place. Like Ann Arbor's awesome. He's going to love it. I hope he does really, really well, but like it's somewhere where people want to come back. I mean, it's a right. great university. The people are awesome. Like those were the best four years of my life. Like I would love to come back for as many events or practices as, as they'd be willing to have us. Um, so I, I'm excited, man. I thought that was like a great, a great first step and a really cool gesture. I mean, we are doing a spring game tailgate, something like that. And tailgates <laughs> for the football season. So, Hey, if you ever okay. want to stop by, get some, get some hail IPA oh, hey, boy. brewing. Teske wow. has been by multiple times. So oh, really? my God. Okay. can I share this story? The, uh, Justin, I think you know this story because my friend busts my balls over it. So, we were at a tailgate in th for the 2022 season. I think it was the Hawaii game. So I see John Teske. I don't want to be weird, but I'm like, all right, dude, you're seven foot one. Like, <laughs> I know who you are, but I have to ask, like, hey, man, are you John Teske? He's like, yeah. And I'm like, hey, so I want to say I was a big fan of you at Michigan. I uh, hope to see you in the league soon. And two yeah. weeks later, he announced his retirement. And now my friend, <laughs> now my friend just like brings it up every time I see him. I'm like, yeah. dude, I just try to be cool. I try to be nice, you know? Now, now he's drinking hazy IPAs with you at the tailgate. Exactly. It's living the, I mean, NBA, NBA hazy IPA. Yeah. Like, that's a tough yeah. call. That is. Uh, that's but it. yeah, had to plug, had to plug North Peak, you know? For sure. Yeah. No, he's a great dude. Um, we've yeah. become friends with him. Uh, obviously, a bunch of those guys are just all good dudes. Um, and so, one, I mean, you gotta have some good Stauskas stories. What's like, I mean, because I feel like you guys clowned on each other. You still probably clown on each other. Do you have one that at least you can share that's a, a somewhat PG thirteen rated? Um, I'm trying to think, man. I got a lot of really good ones, but <laughs> I'd say most of them probably aren't PG. Um, I'll I'll just tell a a quick story. Um, and I don't think he'd mind me sharing this, but like. When uh when Stowski was blowing up that that sophomore year, right? Like he had an unbelievable year yeah. and uh you know turned himself into a top 10 pick. You start to like the second half of the year in, in college basketball, when guys are getting drafted, right? Like, okay, he's probably not gonna finish school now. Like, right, like right. that mind that mindset starts <laughs> to shift. And and Stowski would be the first to tell you, like, he he wasn't the biggest school guy. Like he didn't he didn't he didn't love school, right? Like he knew he was gonna be playing in the league, and I just, uh, I just remember like we were in a 
a bunch of the same classes and um I was like, well, I got to go to these classes still because I'm <laughs> like, I, I need to be eligible and I need to graduate because I'm not going to be playing, you know, with you. Um, but this pro- this professor, like Nick, you know, had kind of shifted and started like transitioning into like MBA and doing workouts and training. It was towards the end of the year, and the professor like kept hitting him up, bugging and bugging and bugging him, like, "Hey, I need you to do this assignment, do this assignment, do that." <laughs> and and I just remember Nick like sent him like the most like the nicest like hilarious email ever. And just basically said like, Hey man, like I, I appreciate you reaching out. He goes, but like, this is literally like the absolute least of my priorities right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, like, I can't remember how he phrased it. He probably still has it. It was funny as hell. Cause it was like all written out, but I was like, dude, you can't, you can't send that. I was like, this is, like, this is the university of Michigan. And, and I remember him sending it. And like, I just looked at him and I was like, oh, man. It's like, I, fuck it. I was like, you probably can. Like, but, uh, yeah. And, Nick, and Nick's smart. I mean, Nick's a smart dude. Like we still, you know, we talk all the time and, um, you know, he, he's a sharp guy. It's just, I mean, when you're 19, 20 years old and yeah. you're getting ready for the NBA draft, I just remember it was just like that professor had to see this and just be like, I don't even know what to say to this. Like, yeah, it, it but I don't know. Like at the same time, like, you know, I, I, like context is important, right? Like you go yeah. to college to be able to start your career. Mm-hmm. And sometimes when you're an athlete and you have the ability to turn professional, that's what yeah. you're there to do. So I, I, sure. I kind of see both sides of it. Um, have you ever seen anyone with a prettier shot than Nick Stauskas? Cause I don't know. I mean, even still like yeah. that, I would just watch his, like when I, when I was getting hyped for this recruiting class that you were part of, I remember seeing his YouTube videos. I'm like, this dude is nasty. Like just in the backyard, just yeah. dribbling around some chairs, but like it translated obviously. And, uh, you know, I mean, his sophomore season was unbelievable, but like, have yeah. you seen anybody with that, that level of shot consistency? No, I mean, no, we, we had like this drill called 50 and five at, at Michigan. It's like coach Beeline's infamous drill, right? It's like one ball, one rebounder, 50 makes in five minutes, all threes. Right. And it's just rapid fire. And like the record at the time, you know, it was like, I don't know, 62, 65. Right. So then it became 60 and five. And I'm like, shit, I was like, this is going to be hard for me. I'm like, I'm not like a sniper like that. So I'm like really working to try to get to 60. But Nick got like every time he's getting, you know, like 71, 73, 75. And I'm just like, dude, you're ruining this for all of us. Like Coach (laughs) Eli is going to think we can all do this. And it's like, if you don't get it, you're running and stuff. So I was like, gosh, darn it. But just, just watching him shoot, it was, it was, uh, I was like, yeah, this dude's going to be playing at the next level for sure. Did you, uh, did you ever give him shit about like recording YouTube videos in his front yard or oh, whatever? Dude, we didn't give him, we didn't give him a hard time. Cause Nick's just kind of like, he, he's, he's different, man. He's just a quirky dude, but like he actually got the nickname tube, tube <laughs> like, from, from coach Val, Laval George started calling him tube, dude. And it kind of stuck. It was, uh, it was, I great. mean, you can't really hate on it much. Cause it probably got him the scholarship to Michigan. Yeah. Like that was how we got found. So yeah. Like uh, who is this dude shooting in his backyard in the snow. Like, yeah, drilling yeah, pointers. Mississauga, Canada. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, well, I'll leave you with this. Um, so my wife played softball in Michigan while you were there as well. Yeah. And I remember her, one of her roommates, uh, to, to be unnamed had the biggest crush on you at the time. There was one oh time um, when uh, I remember we were like, I was at Skeeps. I think you you and a oh, bunch of the boys. I was definitely there. I'm you, sure. <laughs> you, yeah. Mitch, and a bunch of those dudes were there. You and Stauskas were there. I, I mean, probably literally every weekend. Yeah, um, you know, yeah. not to throw you under the bus. There, yeah, so, but, but hey, we want, hey, dude, we were winning. So yeah, exactly. As long as you're winning, you could go. You can do that when you're winning. But it's I remember great. texting her like, "Yo, Spike's here!" Like, <laughs> and oh, I man. think she like came running. I don't even remember what yeah. happened. But oh god, well, I hope I was I was nice. I hope it wasn't a dickhead. <laughs> so I think um, you were you were chill. So okay, uh, cool. But yeah. uh, Spike. Well, last question that I've got since we've got the final four this weekend. Yeah. Who do you got winning uh, men's and women's tournament? Yeah, so I mean, I'm I'm kind of biased, but I'll say in the men's tournament, I I've got Purdue and UConn playing each other. Like in my actual bracket, and who I truly think is going to be playing each other, I think UConn's really good. Uh, no, but I, I'm, we won't, but we real. No, but I'm I'm going to go with Purdue. I'm I'm Ooh, biased. I'm, all I'm, right. I'm, I'm going to bet on Purdue, so I don't know. I hope I'm not throwing my money away. Um, 
And then for, for the women's, dude, I don't know. I, I want to see Caitlin Clark. I don't know yeah. if you guys are. I watched that game almost, last night, yeah. man. That was incredible. Listen, yeah. I know we're we're almost at an hour here, so I want to be mindful of your time. But, like, my biggest thing, I actually tweeted it out today from our account. Like, to all the dudes that think that they could, like, take Caitlin Clark one-on-one. -on -one, like, no. Yeah. No, you no, you can't. No. Not just, like, an average Joe. Right. Like I'm sure, like, team. probably somebody like you, you know. Or yeah. but even, <laughs> even now, like. Maybe, maybe, like, eight years ago, dude. I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty horrible today. But, no, I mean, and this is like, I mean this in the best way possible because I have a younger sister too. So like she hooped. Um, Caitlin Clark plays like a dude. Yeah. Like, and that's right. like, that is like the best compliment you can give in, in right. women's basketball. Like just, I mean, watch, you watch the game versus LSU. Like, dude, she just moves differently than everybody else. Like she's doing Same shit. With, like Juju, Juju yeah, and Paige yeah. do the same thing, dude. Right. And it's like, that's no disrespect. And I hope that doesn't offend anyone, but like, yeah. You can just see it, and there's a reason she's out there dropping forty balls. I'm like, this girl's cold. Like, I mean, she just she pulls up, she hits a three, she goes behind the back, gets through to the lane. Like, she had a behind the back that looked like uh, Mo Wagner against MSU. Just like clear the defender, hey. laid it in. She had some crazy like her her like spatial awareness on the court. Like when yeah. she when she decides she's gonna be a playmaker. Like, I mean, what she had. 40 and 10 and 7, like crazy. just ridiculous. So crazy. I'll be I'll be rooting for Iowa. Yeah. Iowa similar to Purdue, because like I never have any beef with Purdue, kind of like yeah. Iowa. For sure. Yeah, you know, they're just there, you know, on the cornfields. Yeah. Uh I'm just kidding. Iowa City's great. So yeah. yeah. By the way, I love the uh I love the Mo Wagner, Mo Weezy plug, dude. Shout out Mo Weezy. That's awesome. He's a dog. I mean he legend. He's, he's, a real, he's a real legend. That's In the he Concord Elevens, no less, too. Like just out there balling. Yeah. And some retro Jordans, like just putting yeah. thirty on their head to, yes. yeah, and he's win still balling. Still, yeah. Balling. Yeah. Um, yep. no, yeah. he's great. I mean, th those dudes between him and Stauskas, I think uh, we're a very anti Sparty podcast here, yeah. and they just dominated Sparty. Yes. So it was, oh yeah, incredible. yeah, both of them for yeah. sure. There's just a run of, sorry for lack of a better term, but there's a run yeah. of like. Lanky white dude just giving Sparty the business. <laughs> yeah. From from Zach Novak and Sue Douglas. Mm -hmm. I mean, all, all the way. Yeah. I mean, uh just uh Belon left his impression on on uh on Sparty, I will say, with all yeah. the guys that he brought in, man. And even you know, Franz I, obviously Franz didn't play for for Coach Beeline, yeah. but you know, related to that that part of the program, that era in the program. Hey, so. We don't get Franz though without Coach B and without without yeah. Mo, you know, hundred percent. Like for sure. Right. So. Um, all right. Last thing for real. All right. You played with, we talked about it, seven NBA dudes or all these, all these good dudes. You got to take one. Who's, who is the best hooper that you, you played with at Michigan? Oh, dude. It's not, yeah. That's not even a question. It's Trey. So yeah. and I, okay. I, right. I, I tell, you. I'll tell that to all the other guys too. Everybody knows that. <laughs> um, I'm not saying he, you know, he didn't go on to have the best career or whatever, but like, right. dude, Trey Burke was a different animal in, in college. Um, I mean, Even in the NBA, man, like when he was with oh. the Mavericks, like he was putting up – there was times he's putting up 30 a night. Like yeah. he, he had some success. No, Trey's great. It's just the NBA – I mean, it's yeah. tough for being a small guard, and he was right. more, you know, offensive-oriented. Like now, if you're a small guard, like you got to be a dog on defense, whereas like I feel like Trey – I mean, he could defend, but he was more of, of an offensive guy. And, yeah. But, dude, in college, that dude wasn't – he was he was sick, man. I mean, unanimous national player of the year. Right. That's His jersey really should be hanging, by the way, in the hundred percent. It should be. It should be retired. How there's requirements. You have to. You have to get to graduate. Head. Fuck that requirement. Yeah. That's dude. the I'm same a, reason. I'm gonna email yeah. Ward, dude. Fuck that. <laughs> what are we talking about? You got. That's got to be your next phone call to Dusty. Yeah. We gotta yeah. Start making that. He's yeah. Decline for sure. So. <laughs> hey, yeah. Real last thing though, the first game when Trey Burke played at Michigan, I was like, "Yo, this dude is not." top no, number 100 player in the country this dude is for real like yeah. you can immediately see it when he stepped yeah. onto the court at michigan so yep. that's what yeah, that's uh well, that's one of my favorite players too we so. just said real last thing like seven times yeah, we're yeah, gonna let now. you go for yeah. real um uh, but appreciate you coming on the pod yeah. man this is Thanks, awesome Mike. um i feel like you might be our our uh competition though soon if you and stauskas get on yeah get yeah. on the mic you never know. i don't know we're we're both busy dude well, i am i don't know about him he's <laughs> he's like retired so yeah but no but, dude, this was great i enjoy it man i, I appreciate you guys having me this was fun yeah, yeah is man, there anything that on. you got to plug any anything out there no 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 man i'm <laughs> i'm good dude i'll uh next time i'm in ann arbor we'll have to get together man for sure absolutely, we'll link up, absolutely. appreciate we'll you definitely. guys having me on and, and go blue dude there you go. Well, for us, you can follow us at Blue by 90 on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at Blue by 90 Podcast on YouTube. 
in bluebuy90.com. We appreciate you. Go blue. Go blue.